and welcome to the podcast. Uh, a bit of a, a voice from the piping world, which is so much better than mine, Mr. Bob Worrell. <laughs> How are you, Bob? Are you well? I'm doing fine. I'm a voice from the past, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a bit, not a bit. And if anything, it's a voice, Bob, that so many folks missed this year with the World Championships being cancelled and everything. 2020 just well, has been awful for the piping world, hasn't it? It was awful. and yeah, no, it truly was awful. And, you know, some sad bits, some adjustments and everything. Everyone's just trying to keep going and we'll see where we get from here. It's going to be tough. That's it indeed. Yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, did you miss the world championships just as much as we missed it this year? Do you know, Absolutely. what did you, what did you do in August of this year? What did I do in August? Um, well, uh, I'm pretty heavy duty into the gardening here at home. Hmm. And, um, and, but of course, once August arrives and I go overseas, uh, I was supposed to go over and then go directly to Lorient to the festival there. And yeah, of course, none, none of that happened. And so no weed in the garden was safe this summer. <laughs> uh, and the, gar the garden looked better than it ever has in August. And, uh, and then I got into something that my dad and I used to do when I was a kid. Uh, we used to go out in uh, late summer and, uh, and collect these monarch butterfly uh, caterpillars. And we put them in jars and put the Oh, uh, the wow. leaves in and then they would go to the chrysalis stage and then they would hatch and we'd release monarch butterflies. So I said, that's what I'm going to uh. do this summer. And um, got a bit obsessed with it. I don't know, it's probably the personality a little obsessive about things. So I went crazy <laughs> on it and we ended up having uh, 88 monarchs uh, wow. hatched and safely released. So that I think 44 females, 44 males, and and uh, then and the little devils they fly all the way to Mexico. They winter over in Mexico, and so it's one generation to go down there, mm -hmm. but then it takes them three generations to come back. So already, wow. maybe do it again next year, but we'll we'll see. That's fascinating. You're going to get me into butterflies now, Bob. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's amazing. So many people were watching the pictures and everything. So how do you do this? Where do you get them? And all of that. Yeah. So uh, I have a lot of people interested in, in doing it, especially people with young children, because it's, uh, it's really something you can do with your kids, as my mm. dad did with me. My mother was never too impressed with it because we would keep a stash of uh, milkweed leaves in, in the crisper in the fridge. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> when they almost made their way into a salad at home. Oh, no. No, yeah. no, no, no. The boss, <laughs> she, she wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> Oh dear. So I hope you don't mind me saying that you have pretty much been the voice of the world championships for thousands of people around the world now for years. Uh, can I ask then, what does a world championship look like for you every year? It's bound to be so different from those folks on the grass competing. Yeah, it, well, it, it was quite an adjustment for me doing it when I was asked mm -hmm. to do it initially. And I thought I'm, I have no broadcasting background. I'm, I'm a high school teacher. And um, they said, we know, um, but we need someone to give the commentary who's got a background, who's it, you know, and who's an adjudicator. They wanted someone who was an adjudicator. Yeah. And the only direction they gave me, uh, because I said, define my role, because before I agreed to it, I, I could make a right fool of myself on this, you know. <laughs> and um, they said, well, we, we haven't done this since the 1970s. And... Um, so you're going to have to kind of define your role as you go along. Oh, wow. And, um, <laughs> and they said, just, we want to bring in the general audience. So mm. don't get too technical to, to alienate them. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't want to, you know, alienate our people and dumb it down too much where yeah. they're going to shake their head. Oh, Bob, you know, <laughs> that was really cheap, you know. <laughs> so it, it's that fine line you've got to kind of walk with it and um, and to try and connect with people. Speaking with John Wilson there after he emceed the, the Glenn Fiddick and he said, Bob, it was so difficult. He says, I'm standing there at a the microphone, there's a camera looking at me and I'm not talking to an audience. You know, feed off an audience and everything and it was so difficult. And I said, now you know what I go through. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you, you've got these microphones and you're not seeing anyone that you're talking to. So it's, um, it, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting job. 
Um, and it changes a little bit every year, um, but, but there's certain things that they don't want to change. They say it's, mm. it's kind of a formula that people are, are used to. And, and I know with the television program that airs um, a few days or a week after that a lot of people like to see more bands from other grades covered and, and, and all of that. It's tough because you know they've got a budget and they're allocated a certain amount of time. Mm. And so they put the focus on the primary focus in grade one plus some human interest stories that they blend into that. That's right. And that's yeah, usually yeah. where they, they, they do involve me in that. They suggest, you know, what's new in pipe bands that we might want to pursue and it might be a leadership thing, it might be a band on the rise. Mm. Um in that fact I did suggest there a couple of years back that uh, with a band of kids coming from Zimbabwe, it might be one that they might want to yes. want yeah. to cover. And, you know, it was a band that I'd been going down and doing some work with. Um, Paul Brown has been down with me to work with the drummers and Doug Stronach's gone several times to work with the drummers uh, mm -hmm. in the band. And just, it's a wonderful organization to come from a third world country and, and the sacrifice they make. Everyone talks about the amount of money that it costs for an overseas band to get there and this and that, yeah. you have no idea until <laughs> it's a band coming from Zimbabwe. Um, yeah. And um, so they, they ended up covering that band that year. And of course the band ended up winning the, the novice that year, which was really, was really quite a thrill for them. That's it. And a thrill, I think a thrill for, for piping and pipe bands in, in general, you know, because it just shows the global nature of it. And, um, uh, and the joy when there's a win. Oh, that's it. Yeah, and it was a real fairy tale, I suppose. And yeah. then for to have the BBC focus on that, it was honestly yeah. fantastic. Yeah. There's a, I, I don't know, with year after year, there's just so much um, on the internet and, and people discussing the world as we're leading up to it. There's a lot of hype. Mm. Um, and with the championships leading up to it every year, that that's always really interesting to follow that and everyone's speculating and betting on who they think is going to get it. And, <laughs> you know, I get yeah. questioned in advance, what do you think? I went, yeah, because you know, anyone's. <laughs> absolutely. And it's just, it's razor thin between the bands. And yeah. uh, uh, I find it interesting, just there, there are membership changes in the bands from year to year. And um, I call it, you know, usually in you know September, October, and that the, when we've had a fall season, that's, I call it the fall shuffle. That's well, it, one yeah. One person goes to this band or that band, and they're all over the place and everything. <laughs> and interesting to watch. Um, the two-day format has been interesting to watch that kind of evolve and to have both days blended into the result. Yeah, yeah. That's been a real challenge for some bands too, yeah. Immense mm -hmm. challenge. And then, of course, you've got the weather factor. It can be great on one day and stinko on the other mm -hmm. or it could be stinko on both days and uh, and when we went to the um, when we went to the streaming the live streaming of it because the first four years i worked with them it was um there was no live streaming it was just yeah pre-recorded yeah performances it went yeah. online and and then they blend bits and pieces from key performances into the, the television program so even now with the streaming well i'm not heard during the performances i'm talking through all of those performances and then if they decide to use a bit from a certain band's performance into the television program they'll try and grab a little snippet for where i i said something maybe i say accurate yeah or, silly or whatever uh into the program so but at the end of the day you're really mentally exhausted and um and your voice just goes yeah in. You can't be sitting in there drinking a lot of fluid because then you have to go to the toilet. Of well, course. And then there's another band at the line. You're talking straight through. Because <laughs> yeah, there's no breaks in between there. You know, band after band after band. And you're in the booth, really, that whole time, Bob. Yeah. The whole time. The whole time. And then, you know, when, the, when they finish the one event, so if the MSRs are all done at the end of that one and you make your announcements and telling people when we'll be back and this and that and whatever mm -hmm. and I take my leave and they know at that point outside the little the portable toilets like stay clear because yeah. I'm usually <laughs> I'm running for it at that point. and the team and the team there have been um, 
the team that have worked on it over the years um, has stayed pretty stationary for for the most part. You know, Jackie's been the chief commentator yeah. since day one, and she's just absolute dream to work with. She loves doing that, um, even though she'd retired from reading the news um, for BBC Scotland. She was still going to be doing the program this past year, so she hasn't retired yeah. from the scene. And I'm interested to see what will happen next year if if everything goes according to plan. Um, the um, the director Gregor Sterling uh, has been involved right from from the get go, and I just saw recently that he's he's semi-retired, so I don't know if he's going to continue to work on certain projects with them or not. Yeah. Or just uh, to go off skiing in the sunset, which he loves to do. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just always a great professional team, and, and it's a lot of fun over the course of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is. And, uh, you know, thankfully, I was there a couple of years ago now working with the BBC myself and just seeing the goings-on behind the scenes. And I have to say there's an incredible amount of work that goes on covering the event never mind actually being in it as a bandsman right. but actually being behind the scenes it's an incredible amount of work how much would, would you put in yourself as preparation for all of this a fair amount without going overboard mm -hmm. um so if there are any kind of key personnel changes in this and that you know a new lead drummer pipe major new pipe sergeant and yeah and things like that I like to highlight those things over the course of the day at some point mm -hmm. because, because those, those are things people want to hear about and uh, just to establish a connection with people. Yeah. Um, and then I like to keep, get a good handle on what they're going to be playing. Uh, yeah. Um, See a bit of an insight as to what you're going to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Now this past year I was out on the first day doing ensemble sheets, um, for the association not to be counted into the result. But um, so I knew what they had played in the first day. So I knew it was going to be the opposite in the next day. So mm -hmm. I always go back to my hotel room and jot some rough notes down on maybe composers of tunes or, and, and you've heard online some of the medleys early enough during, during the year. Yeah. And um, you see a name of a tune and go, hmm, that it might be kind of, a bit of a weird name and you think there's a story there. I wonder if it's a story I could tell. There so I'll go. send pipe majors <laughs> notes and say, can you tell me something about this? You know, <laughs> that I could blend in the program. And they're always more than happy to share. And they're really, really good with that. Um, so there's that kind of preparation that goes on and composers are tuned and maybe some of the classics uh, that you want to make um, mm -hmm. uh, mention of. And um, yeah, just to, to just keep it moving on and there's a bit of filler but, but you don't have much time because you know the band's in the final tuning area and you're making some comments about that's where the personnel stuff might come in and yeah. then you talk about some of the tunes we can expect to hear and composers and now the band's coming to the line and i've got the two mics so then my uh that mic gets down and then the live streaming mic goes up and then I right. continue yes. to talk through the performance. And you have to keep in mind too, that the team outside in the other booths, they're listening and you've got the producer and the director, they're working with this and they're directing camera positions, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, how, how that all works. Now, do they know that um, Mrs. McPherson Vindran is, is a six part at real and do they know that we're coming close to the end of the performance or at the end of the stress bay. We are now in the last part. And so I'll yeah. make mention of the transitions. So then the director can then maybe uh, alert one of the camera positions. Oh, I to see. Change. Yeah. So I'm talking, it's ah. kind of indirect directing. Yes. And uh, which, which is fun. That's really uh, clever, actually. Yeah, that's really good. And then writing hmm. some rough notes down about some things that were really, really good and some of the things that uh, may have caused a bit of a problem for the adjudicators when yeah. they're, they're trying to determine mm, where do we place this band. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the band is done, I hear in my headpiece, okay, Bob's, uh, the, the, um, the, the other mic goes up and the, the, the live streaming mic goes up and mm -hmm. the performance mic goes down. And then I give some, a bit of a summation 
Yes. So then you sometimes caught, if the band came to the line earlier than they had to, you've got a little extra time in the shoot. So then they're saying, keep talking. Paul. Keep keep going. Get Phil, Phil. <laughs> yeah. you, gotta, you just got to go by the seat of your pants at that point. So <laughs> you need to be prepared, but you need some flexibility to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Do you know, it's, it's bound to be an exhausting day, like you said. And, uh, you know, by the end of the World Championships, most bandsmen and women out there are knackered from a weekend of competing. But you're equally so exhausted from a weekend of walking us through it online. Yeah. So, of course, then you got the folks at home playing the silly stuff, you know. That's, I was just going to ask you, are you aware of this? You know, people throwing big parties and everything. And then the famous Bob World drinking game. Oh, there's a bingo. There's a Bob World bingo too. I've seen the the bingo as well. Yeah, the bingo's good. We used to <laughs> we used to do that at at school. I was I was head of the social science department in our school, and uh, when we go into the staff meetings once a week, or sorry, once a month. It was the first Monday of every month. Mm. The um, the principal at the time he he liked to he liked to talk a lot. And of course, we were sitting there saying, oh, we've just taught all day and everything. We've got marking to do, we've got preparation to do and lesson planning, et cetera. Yeah. And, but he, he had, as any administrator does, they've got their key phrases and expressions. Yes. So I suggested at one point in time to keep us nice and alert that we do the bingo game. <laughs> because a lot of us were already doing that in our classes at the end of us, uh, a unit and a specific thing that we were dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we would... Um, have all the terms that the students had to know and then you just plug the terms in and everyone there's a program and you, you, everyone gets a different bingo card yeah. and then you and you get all the terms and then you just wait for it we put a, a loony <laughs> in for everything <laughs> you, uh, we, everyone put a loony at the start of the game and then if someone got a bingo i said now look in the staff meeting you can't scream bingo <laughs> whoever wins then collects all the loonies so I, I knew that such a thing existed, and um, and then I remember the first time I was alerted to it, and I saw some pictures online, and I'm pretty sure it was Ian Donaldson's crew down in Dunedin, Florida, and they had a band party going, and they had a big thing of chart paper, and they had some of my expressions, <laughs> and it was like one, two, three, four, sh one, two, three, four, sh yeah. and, and taking a drink every time I... and. <laughs> And, and I thought it was brilliant. I thought this is great because let's face it, how many expressions can a piping judge, an ensemble judge, or a drumming judge, different expressions? Yeah. You, or, you know, and, and a lot of them are, are part of our training as adjudicators. Like, uh, they're all there. That's and it. <laughs> so, consequently, you know, over the course of the day, you're going to get a lot of repetition and certain <laughs> keywords. And so, um, so I'm not offended by it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. But then I can play the game too uh, because I can then start thinking up. And this crossed my mind just a few years ago mm. um, that there are words that we could use as adjudicators to describe aspects of a performance um, that are a bit esoteric words, but we normally, well, you would never see on a, on a score sheet. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had a few of those banked. And uh, in fact, Malcolm McRae, a solo piping judge who comes over from Australia every year and adjudicates in the summer in Scotland, he, he had suggested, he's a retired lawyer, so he's, he's got the language skills. So he had yeah. suggested a whole plethora. Ah, there's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> reels there and, uh, <laughs> anyways, he suggested a whole bunch of turns but there was one i remember the first year i did this i thought i'm just going to drop this one into the mix and um and the the band had delivered a component of the performance could have been the reels with just great precision they didn't you know it wasn't too fast it was very efficient rhythmic accuracy everything was there yeah. So I said, oh, those reels were delivered with great alacrity. Now, I'd been reading Ooh, a lot of British wow. novels. Yeah. And British writers use the word alacrity a lot. North American writers don't. But I see. As soon as I said it, of course, my phone was going off. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, 
friends at home would say, alacrity, yeah, Bob, you've, you've got the thesaurus out there today, you know. But uh, was I two, three years ago, year before last, I struggled to hold back certain keywords that you just, you use, you just use them all the time. Yeah, I'm that's not, it. I'm going to avoid it like the plague. And it came <laughs> to the last band performing and I waited till the end. They had just finished and then they said, Bob's live streaming mic up. And I went for it to describe the performance, the performance. And I was like, bing, bing, bing. I know. There's about <laughs> seven or eight of them all in a row. Yeah. <laughs> but, you no. Know, the, the BBC fellows in one of the other trailers, the bingo bit, they were playing the bingo one year. They, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, they were doing it. So I guess oh. Right. oh, my goodness. People are having fun. And isn't That's that it. what it's all about? Exactly, exactly. So, Bob, I have to ask you, you've, you've been on stage as well quite a lot in the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, you know, as compared to a lot of huge events and everything. Is there any one concert or performance on the big stage in Glasgow that really stands out to you as a, as a particular standout moment? All of them. All of them, yeah. Yeah, it just, first off, to do something like that is, it's an honour. Mm. And um, the first time I did it, ho, ho, that was nerve-wracking. You oh, know? really? Yeah. And I was thinking, I think I just want to go back to a booth where I don't see anybody. You know? <laughs> it's a but, big, uh, big crowd in that hall, yeah. Packed, you know. Mm. Yeah, I've done it a couple of times for, for field marshals concerts, and I did um, one for Inverary. Now, yeah. the Inverary one, they were going to go without a compare. And mm -hmm. then it was at the last minute, I might have already been over in Scotland and um, and Stuart and Stephen got a hold of me and said we were going to go without a compare and the more we think about it there are some key points where we do need it not mm -hmm. like the running compare through all the whole thing and yeah which I, I just believe it's the focus has to be on the music and the band etc and who whomever is out there doing the thing with the microphone mm -hmm. Do your bit and get off. You know, just <laughs> and only fill in if the band's not quite ready in terms yeah. of tuning. And, and you know full well if you're doing one for Field Marshal, Richard's going to make sure that the sound is just right before he brings it out. So, yeah. <laughs> so you've got to have a few in your back pocket if you're doing anything for Field Marshal because yeah, you know what he's like with the sound. It's got oh, 100%. Be perfect. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so they felt much more comfortable as time went on with them. The Inverary one was interesting. I think the moment there where they said, we want to do um, uh, the Canadian barn dance thing. They figured I would know all about oh, that. Oh, yes. I've never, yeah. I've never seen a Canadian barn dance in Canada. It's a Scottish <laughs> folk. <Yeah>. That's it. <laughs> it's nothing. We don't have it. And this business, one, two, three, hop, and then the big clap and everything else. Go. Yeah. That, that was all, all new to me. They said, we want to get some members of the audience up to do this, but but don't tell them that they're going to be dancing. So right. we, we need a little help from some audience members. I had to somehow get people to come up. Come on they stage. Know exactly what they're going to be doing until yeah. I had them right at the front of the stage. Rab Matheson and Anne, they were one of the couples. And I think if you had a contest that night for it, like they, they definitely would have won the gold medal. As soon as it were going to be the Canadian barn dance, and Rab was like, yes, yes, I know that one. Here we go. Uh, but that was, that, that was fun. And um, yeah, it just, but I'd say that probably the most unique one was when I, um, co emceed it with John Wilson for the Live in Ireland. Yes, uh, uh, Live in 87. Yeah, yeah. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then they did it in Belfast. John was tied up that weekend. He couldn't go, so I, I did that one on my own. But yeah. the, the one in Glasgow with John, we had fun. My gosh, we had fun. I was going to say, you and John just seemed to have a, a laugh up there, the two of you. You seemed to really enjoy that concert, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, and it was all, it was all the... There were parts that were scripted and parts that weren't, um, but I I have no sense of direction. I, I taught geography for thirty years and I have no sense of direction. <laughs> and uh, 
So John was going to have a go at me for that. And he said, why don't you come out late? We're ready to start and then you come out late. And, and I said, you know, look, he can't even find his way around in his own home. He has no sense of direction. Usually he'll be wandering around downstairs in the bowels here of the concert hall, not being able to find the, the, the backstage entrance. But I was backstage as he was taking the you-know-what out of me. Yeah. And so, of course, when I went on, then, then I caught him off guard. And that's when I said, I heard that. I heard that. And I, I'm guilty. I have no sense of direction. But this man, this great friend beside me, you know, he's never been on time for anything in his life. <laughs> you know, and he's going, oh, no, oh, no. And there he goes. <laughs> and his wife and daughter were seated right there in the front row. I said, this man was even late for his own wedding. Yeah. Right? Of course, throughout the audience, all the women are going, boo. <laughs> and he says, oh, no. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. But let's just verify. His wife is seated right in front of Connie. And she's going, I, he was late. I said, there we go. <laughs> so there were, there were bits and pieces which were um, scripted in advance and then bits that weren't, you know. Yeah. Oh, that, if anything, that really came across on that show. I was there in the audience and it just it added to the whole atmosphere of celebration and folks just laughing and enjoying music. It was so, so good. Yeah. 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 So, Bob, I have to ask you some serious piping questions now, unfortunately. Um, away from presenting and all the rest, uh, I have to ask about your time as a judge as well. Um, now, over this last, well, specifically this last 10 years and the selection of music of bands this last while it seems to be getting more and more modern. You know, the, the medleys are getting more complicated and all the rest. How do you feel the development of music selection in bands has developed over this last 10 years? Do you think it's more modern, more traditional? Depends on the band. Um, yeah. I, I'd say it's, it's a blend. Um, it, first off, if we just deal with the MSR component for a minute, you know, for a long time, I've been calling yeah. for, let's get more variety in there. Now, can you imagine to be sitting in a booth mm. yeah. for hours on end? And here comes another Highland Wedding. Here comes another <laughs> Lord Alexander Kennedy. Here comes another Clan McRae. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. so you know, I've been calling for a three-year ban on, the, on six... <laughs> Six part of tunes, ban them yeah. for three years, and then mm. in year two of the three year ban, there'd be certain stress bays, and then in year three there'd be certain reels. Now, the, the stress bay one would be a little trickier, but you mightn't ban six, but you might have three or something like that. Yeah. Even you know, uh, Susan McLeod said to me a few years ago, and she listens to the whole program and everything else. She said. You must be getting sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Susan, it's 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 a brilliant stress bay, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know, just, that's the that's MSR good. formula has been the same now for I don't know how long. And bands do keep repeating tunes, yeah. Yes, they do. And now without mentioning names, there are some bands that have been shaking it up a bit and mm. going with a four part at March that um, is lesser known, at least in band, band circles and that. Sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Some of those are more so to, so, uh, suited rather for a, a lower tempo on the solar boards. And then when you bring the tempo up, you just flatline it a little bit. So there's yeah. been some experimenting going on there because um, a lot of those tunes are more involved technically. Mm -hmm. And then to get the expression at that tempo, ooh, ooh, it's tough. Difficult to do, Let's yeah. It, you know, uh, a tune like the Highland Wedding is not difficult in terms of technique. Deep, mm -hmm. deep, 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 deep. Like, mm -hmm. all Highlanders. There's another for the top six. It's straightforward. It's very mm -hmm. straightforward in terms of technical demand, but many of the others... Um, I remember Shots, uh, they played uh, for a year or two, they played Captain Carswell when Reb, Reb had the band. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I won the marches at Inverness with, with that tune. So when they played it, I thought, this, this, this is going to be demanding. Yeah. And, and they pulled it off really, really well. Um, 
So, you know, two or three of the other bands are doing that and I, you know, I would encourage it more and more. I'm, it's interesting, you make a comment about banning certain tunes and then, and then years later you start hearing people say, wouldn't it be a good idea if the association maybe came along and, and maybe the music board and through the adjudicators made a recommendation and got accept that certain tunes be, and of course then there'd be a decision making committee that would yeah. decide on the tunes and they get input <laughs> from the bands. But you know, it could be, it could be done. Um, and, but when you hear that and going, okay, I planted the seed. Now let's see where it goes. See but, what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the medleys, I was thinking about that. Um, I was asked this question in an interview recently. And I, I think if you took a look at the bands to date, the, the top grade one bands, and if you looked at the average playing ability out there in the field, it's stunning. Yeah, that is. It's incredible. Top soloists in the world out there, they can play anything. Yeah. And, um, you know, from another generation back, you, that was not the case. You'd have some, but not mm -hmm. a whole band at that, at that level. So tunes that are being composed or arranged that have incredible demand associated with them, no problem. Yeah. It's a matter of impact. It's going to have the impact. Can we blend it? Can we can we weave it into a good melodic uh, presentation? Or is it solid rhythm? Does it have a melodic line to it? You know, those kinds of questions. But yes. You would never have a band today saying, oh, um, there are too many. Oh, gosh. Those have Adri movements with a G Grace note in it. Ooh, that's a P Rock <laughs> thing. Oh, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, you'd have three quarters of the pipers going, no, nope, yeah, nope. no chance. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. So you're hearing tunes out there that um, I think for a lot of the audience members, I think there's a lot of wow factor going on. Yeah. And then at the same time, if it's all wow factor and there's no, you know, you need yeah. the calm before the storm. You do. Set yeah. Up the storm. So we're now seeing, I think, some tradition being blended back in, whether it's with the intro tune. We don't need to come on with a razzmatazz hornpipe. You see a band coming on with a, a melodic three, four march and then building toward yes. a conclusion. So highs and lows in the performance. Mm -hmm. And so the last 10 years, I think, have just been in, incredible in terms of that kind of growth, that level of sophistication. And keep in mind, these people are all, this is a hobby. Yeah, that's it. No one's getting paid here. No, <laughs> exactly. It's an absolute hobby. And to hear that coming out, you know, it's just, yeah, uh, just, you know, tonally over the last 10 years, too. Uh, and you know, there was a point in time where a, a certain sound could have quite easily dominated the contest, whereas mm -hmm. now mm -hmm, you're expecting that. Yeah. You know, it's a checkoff. You know, you're expecting a certain level of uh, mm -hmm. tonal perfection and stability in drones, and, and you're just not having the same frequency of comments on sheets where uh, it's a pity about the drones from, you know, the halfway yeah. point on. It, that doesn't happen anymore. No, yeah. no, mm -hmm. no. So th there's been a lot of progress there and progress technically. And, uh, and in terms of musical sophistication, I know there'd be people who would agree with me. They'd say, oh, there's just a lot of, too much razzmatazz in some of these tunes. But sometimes, yeah. Um, but then it comes down to taste and everything else. But... Um, the level the level of playing has gone way way up yeah i have to agree yeah so i think with, with all of your years of commenting now on the event bob has there ever been a performance that you were talking to or listening to and it kind of drew your breath away and you thought what did i just listen to do you know has there any been any a performance and you thought wow <laughs> yeah yeah there's bound yeah, to be a lot of years there you know where you're like yeah they yeah, I, as, as an adjudicator right now, obviously I have to be kind of careful on that. I don't, yeah. I don't want people to think, oh, that is favoring one band over another or whatever, but yeah, they're, they're being 
from all of the top bands over the last few years. All of the top contending bands' performances mm -hmm. where I go, whoa. And I know at the end, um, I've, I've made comments along that line. My sister yeah. was listening at home a few years back, and it was one of those performances. And my mic went live, and they're waiting for me to make a comment, and I was just taken away. <laughs> and, and then finally, she said, I thought there's something wrong because I thought it was great. And then you finally came on and said, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say from an emotional standpoint, um, the year before St. Lawrence O'Toole won, mm -hmm. there are medley. I was in the booth just from an emotional standpoint. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about tonal perfection, technical perfection. I'm just talking about the emotional impact. Yes. It really grabbed me that day. Wow. Uh, yeah. They didn't win. They won the following year. Um, and there have been there have been several by Field Marshal and several by Inverary over over the last few years. Mm. And now you've got Simon Fraser coming back on strong in the last couple of years with some really, really good performances. And and uh, and Bog Hall has really um, I think Ross has really found himself with the band and yeah. it's all kind of gelling mm. there now. And Scottish power musically in the MSR, I think has, you know, they're one of the bands that's gone to a four part at March and mm -hmm. um, kind of given the green light maybe for some of the other top contending bands to really start thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, playing a three, four, the start of a medley but also integrating Pebronk into a, into a medley. That's right, yeah, and yeah. From an arrangement standpoint, and they did that with their arrangement to Mary McLeod mm -hmm. um, at different points through the selection. Very, very clever, very sophisticated arrangements. Yeah. And um, so, you know, there, there comes the end of the day. Yes, you're an adjudicator, but when you're in there commenting, you're just listening and enjoying and, and giving the audience the listening audience some some commentary that's hopefully somewhat accurate and helps them understand and then I come out of the booth and then the team they're saying so what do you think and I went <laughs> and, you know, I said, who do you think's one I said I don't know yeah <laughs> Just, I don't know there's so many factors here that's it who would you yeah. like and I said you're like oh, get and give a list as long as your arm yeah absolutely and if you're an adjudicator <laughs> out there at the end of the day you're trying to balance everything the overall musical impact and the technical aspect of the performance and then the tonal aspect of the performance mm -hmm. um and then if you're adjudicating from an ensemble standpoint there's so many other things that that work into it yeah um so many different moving parts, Bob. Yeah, to consider. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a bit crazy to try and think of it all. Just to go back one, your earlier question over the last 10 years, I would mm -hmm. say it'd be interesting to go back, and I'd like to do this, to go back and listen to maybe the top six performances 10 years ago. Yeah. And then listen to the top six today and ask Pipers to turn off their piping ear and just focus on percussion mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i would say sensitivity go out on a limb here <laughs> sensitivity in terms of dynamics the dynamics range yeah yeah from uh, a drum core is much more pronounced these days i think you're right too yeah there is that kind of a dynamics range maybe 10 years ago from the vast majority words now you're seeing yeah that's increasing certainly yeah depending on what's being played and and how the band wants to have it portrayed musically mm -hmm. so the overall ensemble package from the bands goes and you couple that with the orchestration now that's coming from the the bass and tenors within yeah. The percussion core. Mm -hmm. um, maybe when you had so many voices, tenor voices, and maybe some were being criticized for overdoing it and then stepping back just a little bit. We can't move forward. I don't think we can move forward in anything unless we go a little too far 
and then we then we bring it back a step yeah. or two. Yeah, yeah, well, quite and, right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's happening uh, to a certain extent. Um, that's it. That'd be an interesting experiment, actually. That's maybe one that us in the Rab Show, we could try, get some recordings from 10 years ago and maybe compare them. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, Bob, can I ask you then about your own piping career? Uh, throughout your years of playing, judging, commenting, and all of your involvement in the piping scene, how, what has been your most memorable moment to date? That's quite a difficult question to ask someone, but has there been one moment? I started piping took up the chanter in 1963. Um, and, and then I was, by the late 60s, 19, 1969, 1970, I was into the open professional ranks here at home. Mm -hmm. I think if I looked at that decade by decade, there'd be different things decade by decade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Maybe early on when I was competing, there might have been certain um, competitive successes yes. that I would have said at the time, oh, yes. But as time goes on, quite frankly, there's not a lot of meaning in my life to mm. those. Uh, the study here, which is full of books because I love to read, um, years and years ago, it was, you know, I'd stopped competing ages before mm -hmm. that, but it was the, the shelves were littered with all of these little <laughs> keeper trophies from years of solo competing. Yeah, um, there are none now. They're all packed away in boxes in in the attic. Um, wow. Yeah. None of that really. It helped you get maybe where you well. It did help you get where you are, mm -hmm. and understand music and and maybe be a better teacher of the instrument and do a fair fair amount of teaching uh, both here mm -hmm. at home and, and online um i'd say the international things that i've done anytime i've been asked to go you know to new zealand or australia to adjudicate and teach same thing with south africa many times those are all individual highlights yeah and the first time i judged the worlds that was in 1989 um, at Bella Houston Park. Mm -hmm. I even had the, the judging year. I was on the grade two of the year. It was at the Scotsman Showgrounds, the Dust Bowl. Oh, yeah, the Dust Bowl, yeah. <laughs> with each circle, like, backing onto each other. On the top of each other, yeah. <laughs> um, but but all of those were, were terrific. Um, had a lot of meaning. Hmm. When I was taken off guard a couple of years back, when um, in between the March to Aspe and Real and the Medley, um, the BBC folks said, we need you in the main arena. And we have limited time, you know, grab a bite to eat and then get ready for the medley. And yeah. uh, I said, what's going on? And they said, oh, well, Jackie's chatting with then George Usher and a few other of the top officials in <laughs> the RSPBA. And, and I said, and I had my script and everything. I said, well, I'm not needed there. No, we just like you there just to support Jack. You just kind of be there. Yeah. I went, okay. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I'm going to stand there and look stupid. I went, so I went out there and then she mentioned something to George. And then George started going on. And it was at that point I realized the penny dropped. They're going to present me right now with the long service pin. And, um, oh, yeah. And it was done. It was done right there. And that was caught me off guard. I don't like to be caught off guard like that. Cause it, was pretty, it was pretty emotional. Yeah. Um, but it, it was on, it was an honor, you know, to be an overseas adjudicator, having having done this for well since 1989, mm -hmm. and to be recognized in that way, it was, um, and to be welcomed, kind of welcomed into the fold and everything. It, it, it yeah. It's difficult yeah. to describe, I guess. Quite incredible, though. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of folks listening right now could really get the emotion behind that, you know, because yeah. that is a, it's a huge yeah. recognition. Yeah. Sitting, I guess sitting in the concert hall and having a band at that showcased concert mm -hmm. play one of your own compositions, like that's like, wow. Wow, yeah. Yeah. There um, you go. <laughs> That's a biggie, and um, but I think in terms of a single one, 
and it's more recent, is when the kids from St. John's College in Harare in Zimbabwe, when yeah. they uh, when they won there a couple of years back, the novice grade that that was a biggie. Yeah, uh, that, that would be special for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so many great great moments, but I'm sure and many more to come as well. Uh, I, have a, I have no doubt. So can I ask you, a lot of folks look to yourself as an inspirational figure in the bagpiping world, uh, but is there anyone that you look to for inspiration as being this inspiring figure in the bagpiping world? It's a difficult gonna, question. <laughs> it's like when Jackie Bird says, so give me one man that you think is going to win. And then I say, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't give me five. And I said, well, okay, I'm going to give you about five. I just... Sure, sure. <laughs> um, as a kid, as a kid coming up, I had every recording by John D. Burgess. Oh yes, John Burgess, legend. Yeah. And and I would learn the stuff by ear. Right. Yeah. And then when I finally went over for a couple of years and competed and competed with him, and got to know him, and and since his passing, got to know his his daughter, hmm. Margaret Craig, quite well. Who lives in in Inverness and. Um, he was an inspiration early on, as was Pipe Major Angus MacDonald, big time. Yeah, big yeah. Time. Mm. Um, just his style, Angus's style of playing, the sound and how he took the stage. And it wasn't just the playing, it was it was the whole performance part of it and the yeah. confidence. Confidence, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had lessons for many years here from uh, the late John Wilson, who'd come over from Edinburgh in 1949 to Canada, mm -hmm. who had had the fingers blown off the, yes. with the blasting cap when he was a kid and relearned further across the chanter and everything. Um, at a les lessons with him, he never missed a grace note. And he had had a, one lung removed. And he had all sorts of other health problems. And it was just... It was an inspiration to go to a lesson and have a person be able to demonstrate something at his age. And he mm. was, I was going to say he's probably about my age now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and not miss a thing. It, yeah. it was, that's inspirational. Um, and then today, if you take a look at people who are competing, the, the young guns coming along are just, are just superb players and they've got this huge piping life ahead of them. But then you take a look at people like Roddy McLeod, Willie McCallum, and God bless him, Jack Lee, who just gave a tremendous Peabrock at the Glenfiddich this year. Oh, incredible. Uh, yeah. These guys are still going, going mm. well, and they're, inspira they're inspirational to all the young players coming along. They're teaching a lot of yeah. these young players. And, you know, my hat's off to them. And, of course, they're, this is their livelihood. And... And I used to say to Roddy when he was a principal at the piping center, I said, how do you do it all? You know, you've got the piping center, you've got piping alive and everything else going on and yeah. all the events of the piping center and to juggle it all. It's just absolutely amazing. And, uh, and then here on home turf, um, I would say that our own Michael Gray, in terms of creativity, Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable creativity mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the, the, the music he's put together and his own compositions and everything else. Um, in, when he was with the 78 Fraser Highlanders and helping put together their medleys, he was way ahead of his time. Yeah, I would say so too, 100%. Yeah. Way ahead of his time. And, you know, you talk about key performances. I'd say one performance, if I jump back to an earlier question, Mm -hmm. Not when it was being live streamed or anything, that the year before uh, Vic Police won. Um, oh, yeah. Was, oh, they should have won the year before and this and that. Well, um, <laughs> I was one of the judges the year before <laughs> on the medley and had them first. And yeah. I listened to that performance again recently because I thought, was I deceiving myself? <laughs> and I went and listened to it again. I thought, you know what? There's a performance from night whatever 95 or whatever it was yeah i guess 95 yeah yeah mm -hmm. that would stand the test of time today musically tonally mm. technically it was really really good it was one of the finest performances i think i've ever heard mm. um at 
that ear in the, in that era. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Unbelievable. But uh, so I'd say Michael on home turf, he, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a great friend of mine, and, um, but also an inspiration. There you go. And, Definitely. Uh, yeah. He's always got to have something on the go, new and different. And he's always got creative ideas and everything. <laughs> Constantly uh, working on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on, on Scottish turf, if you look at John Wilson. Yes. Uh, from Strathclyde Police mm -hmm. as a solo player and still playing brilliantly. Yeah. His solo career, his career with the band and then is continuing to contribute as an adjudicator, both in solo competitions and band competitions, and his contribution to the adjudicators management board, and working with a lot of personalities. Yeah. But that's where his background <laughs> in the police, he just, he just has a way of bringing people together. There you go, um, yeah. And I think the, associ the association from a pipe band fan standpoint and also the solo adjudicators association very lucky to have him mm. and his skills not just as an adjudicator but just his personnel skills and how he can bring people together highly respected yeah dear friend of mine and um but also an inspiration totally to keep yeah. playing you know he's just my senior by two or three years but uh, when i hear how well he plays i go Oof. I'll get the pipes out. There's yeah. no excuses here. There's no excuses. There you go. Uh, so I have to ask you then, Bob, with the global pandemic and everything, it's been quite a terrible year for 2020. Um, how have you found lockdown on all of that yourself, personally? I guess I could lie and say, oh, it's been fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure you've missed the music like the rest of us. Yeah, everyone's personality is different, hmm. and you know some people can manage. I think without a lot of social contact, and they're fine. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Yeah, and um, I have no hesitation in tell telling you, whoever will listen here today, that. Mm -hmm. I found this really difficult, just from a social interaction standpoint, very difficult. Yeah. Um, and, um, but, you know, putting energy into, you know, my own teaching and, and pupils and trying to keep them positive, saying, well, you don't have a competition season, but here's a great opportunity to expand your repertoire. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because you're not out there competing every week and, and, the tunes you've always wanted to work on, but you couldn't because you were focused on here come the next X number of competitions. Yeah. So, yeah, the, trying to keep them motivated and everything, but, but I worry. I worry about um, our ability to attract, when there are no competitions, to attract new players, youngsters. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's and, true. And, adult learners too when there's mm. nothing out there for them to hear or see or very little yeah the yeah. online contests the virtual contests they've been, they've been great for for what they do mm -hmm. because it, it's helped p keep people going um, uh, some of the the higher end players have chosen not to get involved there i understand that uh it's been great for the younger up-and-coming players mm -hmm. yeah and um, you know, so I applaud all of the, the bands or organizations that have had those. I've been adjudicating a number of those. I think South Africa did one, and mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. from Australia, and a bunch in the States, and here in Canada, and, and like two or three in the UK. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 still not the same. You're not no, playing for an audience. Is, yeah. Um, and there are all sorts of other factors that that play into that that just don't make it quite the same. Um, yeah. What happens in 2021, I don't know. You know, there's talk at this point in time that we're close for a vaccine when, uh, whenever it's available and, um, and you can sign up for it.
I was like, hello. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. Me. I don't care where you have to stay. <laughs> I will bear all. Of That's it. Just to get <laughs> back on the grass again. Yeah. Yeah. It just, and I worry about the people who've been established players in the bands and also in, in the solo ranks who people that do this, you know, this is an obsessive thing that we're involved. It's, this yeah. is our life. Mm -hmm. But when you take something away for people that have that personality, other things come rushing in. To fill the void. Yeah, like you were saying with your butterflies and everything. There we go, the butterflies Gardening. And and reading books. And yeah, everything. yeah. Mm -hmm. But people who have families in that, and all of a sudden there's more time for their kids, more time for the family, more time for their relationships. Yeah. And will they go back? Will they go back with the same intensity? That's it, yeah. Will they say, you know, I've done my bit. <laughs> Yeah. You know, every yeah. year at the world's, you know, you get a note saying, "Oh, so and so who's been with us <clears throat> since the start of the band, and listen, that this is their last competition." So you make some mm. mention of it as they're leaving, coming out of the shoot at the end. How many people have made that decision now? I... Yeah, that's the scary thought. Yeah, it really is, and it's something we've discussed on the show before. You know, now that folks have this free time and you know aren't lifting the chanter or the sticks and that you know what's going to happen next season if the season does open its doors will we have as many bands being able to feel the band in the first place right. yeah and my you know my social bubble includes some elderly relatives who live nearby mm -hmm. um, but other than that it's it's small number of piping friends and then staying in touch with them via zoom and everything yeah yeah in fact donald mcphee arranged on the days of all the championships this year mm -hmm. that evening uh there'd be a zoom call that all of the judges could go in if they wished and oh it's a great oh brilliant those are great everyone goes on with a drink and then we just sit and ins insult each other <laughs> and everything oh you can well imagine it's just all great fun yeah and um and then on Mondays, there, there are a group of us who adjudicate solo contests overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get together and, and have a little little Zoom chat. Take or us. That's one, great. We have it with, it with a drink. So they get together for a drink. So they're, they're saying, well, we'll do a happy hour thing. Yeah. And they're <laughs> want, wanting to do it at like, initially, I think it was four in the afternoon UK time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they said, come on with a drink. And I said, it's 11 in the morning. In the morning. Me. I'm going on with a hefty dram at 11 in the morning. Yeah. I'm flat in my backside on the couch in the family room, you know, by two. I'm going, that's it for me. So they've um, moved them a little later. So at least it's afternoon. That's not too bad then. Yeah, you could live with that. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, when we go into lockdown, what, what do we do? We've got to talk to people. We've got to stay connected. That's it, indeed. Yeah. No, and ourselves in the Rab Show are doing what we can to try and keep our piping audience involved. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. You know, I take a look at my own phone that's charged up at the start of the day. And and then by the end of the day, I go, oh my gosh, I'm down to like 5%. How much time have I spent on Messenger chatting with friends throughout the world? <laughs> um, they are. Staying in contact with people and, and that, having, having a laugh. So, that's it. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. I hope for the best. I really hope for the best. I think 2021 might be a bit of a transition year. Yeah, that's it, I think. Building towards hopefully something better in 2022. Yeah, yep. Yep. I think you're right. Yeah, once we come to terms or get used to this new normal, as they're calling it, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what way that develops. Uh, but, Bob, before I let you go, um, first of all, I have to say a massive thank you for taking time to chat to us on the show. Uh, we have a massive, massive, uh, how would you say, fandom of yourself. Uh, we religiously follow the live streams of the world every year, and we absolutely love your commentary. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> uh, but have some big rab show staples that we ask every single guest that comes on the show. And... Oh. Yeah, prepare yourself. <laughs> I have to ask you then, uh, what is your favorite cheese? Uh, I like old cheese, an old, an old cheddar. Um, and I do like good smelly blue cheese. 
Oh, the real stinking stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Smellier the better. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, I have to ask you then as well, food related, of course. Uh, pineapple on pizza. Yes no. or no? No. 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 Thank you. You're not a savage. No. <laughs> and also, there's been a little bit of a fashion trend in the piping scene this last while uh, about yellow flashes. Have you noticed this? Would you be a fan of yellow? No. <laughs> Two thumbs down on yellow flashes. I no. just think it's so difficult to carry it right, you know. Red, red laces. Oh, I've seen that, actually. I've seen a band with red laces. It does look well, good. I tell you, Brian Donaldson, who, who was a pupil of John D. Burgess, this mm -hmm. is where he got the whole fashion bit, right? Yeah. He comes up from, he was living in the States, and would come up and play with the Peel Police Pipe Band Front Rank. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone there with the black laces, but Brian would still wear the red laces. The red. <laughs> that would be so cool to see a whole band out there with red laces. I it was. Eating with red laces. Oh, yeah. There you go. I, I'd be up for that. Yeah, but yellow red flashes. Laces. And I think with, <sighs> with the vests are on, and, and sometimes, especially with players who are a little shorter, um, I used to like competing with, you know, like the, the, the guy serving the cards at a poker game, having... Oh, oh yeah, the, the sleeve. Yes, all that. There's a term for it. Anyway. Oh goodness, can't remember. I used to have those. I compete with those on. I thought, wow, well, that was sharp. They I remember go. saying to Callum Beaumont because Callum's short, right? And he'd mm -hmm. be playing, and there was this this shirt sleeve that was down like <laughs> this. And I said, Callum, you need to get those. He said, oh, I know, I know, it's a bother. I said, you need the the poker. The, the little cuff thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the word for that oh, is. So sharp. There you go. I, yeah, I would agree with that, 100%. So I have to ask you, this is a difficult question to answer, mind you, um, but have you got a most embarrassing moment uh, throughout all of your career in playing, adjudicating, anything that stands out cringeworthy? Two. Two? Oh. <laughs> One of my trips to Uruguay, uh, teaching down there, and at the end of the whole teaching week and that uh, I was doing a recital and it was a combination of Highland pipes and small pipes and everything mm. else. My first day there, I picked up something. Um, it was, it was food poisoning and it, it was bad. And oh, no. I was sick with it. Yeah. And I said, I can get through this recital. I can get through this recital. And I managed several selections and I was going to do a couple more on the Highland pipe. And I thought, no, I need to sit down. So I thought, I'll just sit down with the small pipe and then I'll have some water and then I'll go back to the Highland pipe. So I was trying mm -hmm. to finesse this with the audience. They didn't know that I was really ill. Yeah. And I went to sit down and I collapsed, passed out on the floor. Someone grabbed the pipe. Oh, no. Her, yeah, rushed to the hospital and I was there overnight on IV. Now, that's no. a bad one. Oh, now, my that's word. A, that's a bad one. It's not, that's horrible. That not a funny one. It's not a funny one, but it was an no. embarrassing one. Wow, that's horrible. And uh, obviously, one. you came through the other end of it, fighting fit, then, I'm sure. I don't yeah. want to talk about what came out the other end. That was... No, <laughs> no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, now, when I started teaching at one of the schools here locally, uh, a gal came up to me and she said, my mom uh, is one of the music instructors at Theatre Sheridan, which is... I didn't know at the time it was one of the major theater music programs in all of Canada. They all go off to Broadway and everything else. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, Rory McDonald, actually, uh, from, from Regina, he, he's a, a tenor drummer who plays with Inver and District. He went through mm -hmm. that program. Right. Uh, yeah. Just to kind of connect it with the piping world. But, mm -hmm. but this is going way, way back and into the mid 1980s about 1985 i guess and she said they need a piper for this one big production they're doing a brigadoon and yeah. um would you be interested and i said yeah, maybe so i went and met with the director and i thought it'd be go and play a couple of tunes before the curtain goes up every night and yeah 15 minutes away and come home mm -hmm. so i quoted them a very very low fee for it, very low and then I found out everything that was involved. So they had me playing throughout the thing. They were taking bits of the musical score out and having piping instead. So the oh, wedding wow. scene and the funeral scene and this and that. And they were aging me. Nowadays, you wouldn't have to do the gray bit, but they were putting the gray in the hair and <laughs> yeah. the wrinkles that are natural now. And, um, and then they had me singing in, 
in the chorus a couple of times. It was hilarious. <laughs> and um, anyway, I said, okay, I've got these different kilts. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Because Brigadoon is this mystical or mythical place. And mm -hmm. you have to have the long working kilts we've got in our wardrobe department. They're making one. So they made it. So instead of like belt buckles mm -hmm. that we use, but it was these little clasps, you know, where it's like a little whole thing. And the one thing is like a little pop. pop. Oh, little poppers. Yeah. No, I, I don't know what they're called. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a long kilt that's getting close to the ankles. Okay. So the first scene, okay. I had to come in through the audience for the wedding scene and pipe them up this fake staircase that looked like fake rock. Okay, yeah. And you know how you're marching along, and it was Mari's wedding, so I'm playing, mm -hmm. and you got the left yeah. and the right, and you're trying to time it so that when you get to the stairs, you can go left, next yeah. step, and next time. step. So mm -hmm. I'm sharpen the steps. Okay, I can manage this, and I get to the one step, and then as I go to lift and the other, because of the length of the kilt, the other foot was caught on the kilt, and as I oh, went like no. this, it's a full house, it's an opening night, and I'm feeling <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Oh, no. <laughs> now, I just remember, because I could feel it. Yeah. My right elbow went down quickly, and I'm going up sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Mari's wedding. Yeah. Looking like someone who is physically handicapped. Yeah, and all over on one side. And then the, the director, and I managed to get up there, and I'm trying to fix it when I got to the top. The director came out <laughs> after the next scene and said, what happened? What happened? And I said, look at this. <laughs> look at this. I told you I want to wear my own kilt. And he said, oh, dear. He said, you're almost done in there in your underwear. I said, if it yeah. weren't for a quick, a quick move with the right elbow here, yes, I would have been. Anyway, so we oh. got the wardrobe people in immediately, and before the next scene, they had it all fixed. So... <laughs> That was wow. that was one of the the biggies, which would have been quite humorous, but it was humorous. <laughs> oh my word! I'm sure at the time you weren't laughing too loud, though. But no, yeah, that's no. something you can look back on. Certainly, <laughs> fantastic stuff. Well, Bob, I've kept you for a long, long period of time, and I have to say a massive thank you for taking time to chat to us, and for all of our listeners as well. You know, who'd be mad keen to hear from you. So I'm glad you're keeping safe and well. And hopefully this won't be the last time we can hopefully chat to you again on a future show. Love to. Thanks. Thanks for asking me to do this. It's been great fun. Great no fun. problem at all. Thank you so much. Thank you.